Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for our August webinar. My name is Megan Lebeda, and I am a program developer here at Kirkwood Corporate Training. And with us today, we have Brooke Strongkohler presenting on Unlocking Potential, the Power of Delegation. Brooke has a remarkable talent for rallying teams towards a common goal while creating a positive, supportive, and collaborative environment. Brooke's own uh, coach, Brooke owns uh, coaching and consulting where she assists individuals in overcoming leadership challenges and achieving professional goals through personalized coaching and workshops. She also established Lucky Paws Dog Daycare and Boarding, which has been serving the Iowa City area for over 20 years and is one of my Corgi's absolute favorite places. Thank you so much for being with us today, Brooke. We are really excited to hear about your topic today. It has been highly requested from multiple webinars. So I'm gonna turn it right over to you to get started. All right, thanks, Megan. Well, welcome everyone. Like Megan said, I'm Brooke Strong Kohler. And today we're going to learn a bit about the important leadership skill of delegation. Um, this is an area that in working with leaders, both old and new, that I have found they tend to struggle with quite a lot. Um, before we get started, and Megan did a little bit of this, but I'll just give you a little bit about myself. Um, I wanted to just kind of do a high level. Uh, I'm a proud first generation community college graduate. I also hold a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in sociology, a master's degree in student affairs administration, and a PhD in Educational Policy and Leadership Studies from the University of Iowa. And um, you might say I'm a lifelong learner, so I'm equally as likely to be seen on the other side of the webinar screen as I am on this side of the webinar screen because learning is sort of a passion of mine. Um, much of my 25-year professional career has been either in the classroom as a professor or in a variety of leadership positions within higher education. So I previously spent um, a couple of decades working at Kirkwood Community College and my current full-time uh, job is uh, as a professor of leadership um, at the University of Iowa. Uh, recently, so just sometime last year, um, I launched my own leadership coaching and consulting business as Megan noted and it's got a really fancy name called BSK Coaching and Consulting. So clearly not a marketing genius, but a pretty simple little title. Um, I work with leaders, both new and old, or maybe I should say both new and seasoned, and provide a variety of group trainings or one-on-one -on -one coaching um, to individuals. So a few fun facts about me, Megan spilled the beans. I'm also an entrepreneur. So for the past 22 years, I've co-owned a doggy daycare in the Iowa City called Lucky Paws. And I also spend uh, quite a lot of time um, as a dog mom, a cat mom, a kid mom, and a wife. And I would say it is certainly a busy but fulfilling life. And I have found delegation to be one of the things that helps me get through this crazy, busy, fun, fulfilling life. So I bet many of you are here today because you are very busy and you're trying to figure out a way to get more done with less stress. And we all have limited time every week and most of us have more time to do more to do than time we have to do that, that in. Um, and so in your week, you get only 168 hours. And when you write that on paper, it looks like a lot. Um, and 10,000 minutes seems like a lot, and 604,000 seconds seems like even a ton. But then once you start penciling it all out, you realize, whoa, I can't get all of this stuff done. So today's presentation is a smaller unit of a larger workshop, workshop that I actually do on time management. Today, our focus is going to be on all things delegation, and in 50 or so minutes, we're really probably just gonna to get to scratch the surface is the honest truth. One of the most useful and important skills that I think you can learn as a leader is how to delegate. So the good news about delegation is that everybody actually already knows how to do this. So I'm not gonna, I'm not really gonna teach you anything you don't already know how to do. Um, you're already doing a lot of delegation, my guess. 
uh, in your personal life. So you probably don't think of it though, or recognize it as delegation. So I'm guessing some of you have this really great new technological advance called auto bill pay. You don't actually sit down with a checkbook. As, my, as I get older and um, the younger generation comes up, like my kids don't even know how to write a check. They don't have a checkbook, right? We used to sit down and you'd have to sit down and I'm going to pay the bills on a certain day. I'm going to write a check. I'm going to put it in the mail. I got to find a stamp. You don't do that anymore, right? You set up auto bill pay, you delegate it to somebody else. It's automatically done by somebody else. Maybe you pay someone to mow your lawn, right? That's actually delegation. Um, maybe you talk to Alexa or Siri in your house and you have them do work for you, like make a list. So in my house, when my kids always want something, can you get this at the store? Can you get that at the store? I finally just said, hey, just tell Alexa and she'll make me a list. And then I can look at the list and I could take it to the grocery store. Well, that's also delegation. So it actually turns out you're pretty good at delegating at least in certain spaces. So in our short time today, we're gonna to focus on a few areas surrounding delegation. Um, first, we're gonna kind of talk about what do we mean by delegation? Because there's actually different types of delegation. We're gonna talk about the benefits of delegation or why you should delegate. How to get started with delegation. I think this is sometimes something that's difficult for people. Um, they want to do it. They know it will be useful. But how do you do it? How do you actually get started? And then we're going to talk just a little bit about what to do if something doesn't go well when you delegate. And it's, it's going to happen, right? It happens to everybody when we delegate. Something happens, doesn't go exactly as, as we intend. And then it's my intent to leave some time for questions at the end in case you have some. All right. So... We're gonna start by identifying what delegation is. And the Oxford Dictionary tells us, delegation is where you entrust a task or responsibility to another person, typically one who is less senior than oneself. Okay? My guess is you all know what delegation is. Okay? Take There's many different words give to somebody, transfer, right? There's all different ways we could describe it. So this isn't news to you, but did you know that there's many different types of delegation? So we're gonna talk a little bit about the different types of delegation. So let's start with um, the difference between formal and informal delegation. So, Formal delegation happens when you officially transfer some responsibility as part of a larger organizational structure to somebody else. And so a lot of leaders have, um, they have some things that they may transfer formally and then there's some things they may do informally. So let me give you some examples. Let's say you're the budgeting officer for your unit. You are in charge of doing the budgeting. And typically that means you have access to and responsibility over tasks and information that a lot of times other people on your team don't have. Um, but let's say you just hired somebody or you got somebody new on your team who you know has a good background in, in finances or budgeting or some sort of accounting skills that you think, man, they could do this work it could save me some time, right? So if you feel they're well-suited to take over some of those fi financial tasks, you might seek authorization to formally delegate some of the financial tasks to this person. Then they can do some of this work on your behalf. Um, of course, there's usually a lot of hoops that you would need to jump through in order to get this to happen. Um, but this is one of the ways that you can actually help sort of ease your load and take advantage of maybe some skills of people on your team uh, that, that would actually, you know, help the whole team out. So that's kind of a like a big one, right? Like delegating this formally 
this formal task where it's sort of an ongoing task to somebody, um, that, that's kind of a big one. Sometimes formal delegation can also take the form of, uh, say, you have a standing sort of cabinet meeting or a council meeting, maybe once a week or something like that. And in this cabinet or council meeting, you um, often have to report out what's going on on your team or within your unit or some numbers, et cetera, right? And it's just sort of the standing, standing meeting. Well, everyone can't always be there all the time. Sometimes people are on vacation, maybe you get sick, those sorts of things. Another way that we do some sort of formal delegation is you might identify somebody on your team to represent you when you must be absent. Okay, from these meetings. So you identify someone formally within the organization, within your unit, that is then sort of given permission to sit in on a meeting on your behalf, um, a meeting that they don't typically attend, um, but when you can't be there, they can come and represent you. And so we oftentimes don't think of formal delegation as something uh, that saves time. But if you have some skills on your team and you can formally delegate a task, just sort of shift it over, that's one way to, to ease up your time. And then sometimes maybe you also have someone who could represent you on a, a work group or something um, that could ease up some of your time too. And you can go through this formal process to try to get them to be reassigned. Most likely the kind of delegation that you are interested in and probably that you um, um, have experienced yourself or would probably like to implement is probably more along the lines of informal delegation. So informal delegation is much less systematic. It's much, much less official. You're gonna typically see informal delegation occur in your day-to-day -day work. So oftentimes you'll see this on projects, right? And so your team has a new project coming up. It's a big project. Uh, maybe you've been asked to create, let's say a new marketing campaign for one of your clients, and maybe it's on a tight timeline and you look at it and go, okay, how is it even possible that we can get this done in this short amount of time? Um, but you said yes, and you know you can do it. And so now you're trying to figure out what are we gonna do? Maybe you break up the project into many smaller parts. You start to create some groups and say, okay, there's about five different major things that we gotta do to create this marketing campaign. I'm gonna ask five different people to lead a group. And you recognize that it's just for this one time, it's just for this one task, you don't need special permission, right? You are the lead of your team. Your team is in charge of doing this. And so you decide this is the best way to break up the work. You could be the lead for all of those groups, right? You could meet with each of the groups and you could sit there and say, okay, you guys are going to be in charge of this and here's what I want you to do. And then you can meet with the next one. But by dividing up informally and identifying a lead for each one of those five groups, it frees up time for you and gets them sort of rolling much more quickly. And so that's sort of informal delegation. I think this happens quite frequently in the corporate world. Um, it happens quite frequently in education where I um, spent a lot of time. We will you know, get a big project and we'll look at it and go, okay, how can we accomplish this big project? And you start to think about different people who might um, fill a need that you have and think about a way to bring your team together to everybody kind of contributes as a whole. So informal delegation is probably the most common that you're gonna see, but I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that there are forms of formal delegation that do happen as well that you might consider. All right, so another sort of way that we can look at delegation is by comparing general versus specific delegation. And these terms are pretty obvious, but um, we'll all go kind of give you some examples that might help to sort of give you ideas about what I'm talking about. So general delegation is obviously gonna be very broad. 
um, in this type of delegation, you might hand over an entire project to a person and allow them to accomplish it however they see fit. This is hard. <laughs> and so when you're the leader of the team, um, if if you have a project and you're like, okay, this project needs done. I don't really have time to do it. I sort of have a sense of what I need, want done, but I'm not real sure. You can hand over just in a general way. Like, okay, here's a big project. I need you to, to be the lead on this. I need you to take your team, figure out how you want to do it. Um, maybe I should give you an example. Let's say, um, your boss has asked you to present findings from a report that your team has been working on at an upcoming meeting. You might take that report and hand it over to somebody on your team and ask them to create a presentation for you, right? You might give them minimal direction or particular details. You just turn them loose and you say, remember that report that we spent all that time working on? I have to I have to report on it at an upcoming meeting and I really don't have time to create a big presentation. You know the information in the report because you were the one that worked on it with your team. Your team knows the report as well. And so you turn them you turn them loose. Um, and you say, you know, I don't really care how you do it. I just need you to create this, right? So that's really sort of general delegation. You're not going to provide much detail, you're just going to kind of hand it over and say, here's here's what we need in the end. Get there how you get there. Again, sometimes it's hard for leaders to do this because we get sort of caught up in, in this is how I like to do things. And so it, it takes some uh, real good self-control to be able to hand it over and go, it doesn't matter what the product is. As long as everything's in there, I can work with it. That's general delegation. Um, specific delegation, again, just what it sounds like, but you hand off a project or a task or an item to somebody that needs completed, but you have to provide very detailed information about this needs to be included. We have to follow these processes. Um, you know, we can't, we, when you do this, you must include this or it needs to be in this format. So different projects require different specifications, right? And so sometimes what happens is you, you may delegate a project or a task and it's gonna have to come with a whole lot of details and that would be specific delegation. So Another example for you, um, let's say you and other department heads in your organization have been given some data about your department and um, your leaders have asked you to bring it to the next board meeting to discuss it along with a report that summarizes this data. Okay? And so maybe you decide this is a good opportunity to delegate this to somebody on my team, to have one of my team members do this. Well, when you get the assignment from leadership that says, hey, at the next board meeting, we're going to present this and you're going to write a report, maybe they provide you templates and they provide you specific um, ways they want the data to be reported or a specific format that they want the report in. So maybe there's a common template, for example, so that they can put it all together in one sort of document that can be, you know, sent to other consumers or board members or, you know, et cetera. So when we look at specific delegation, that's sort of what we're talking about is we can delegate different tasks and we can either, we can sometimes approach it as, hey, it doesn't really matter what the end product looks like. Here's the goal. Do it whichever way makes the most sense to you. And other times when we delegate, we have to actually give really specific details and really make sure that there are specific um, instructions being followed. Um, of course, I know what you're thinking. There's gotta be something in between there, right? There's gotta be something in between general and specific. And of course you're right. There's a big gray area in between general and specific. And, um, We'll revisit some of that here in a little bit as I give you a few more examples and talk about some of the, the different benefits and, and stuff of delegation. But 
um, just know that it's probably more like a continuum. I've, I've sort of made it into two different categories, but there's definitely some in the middle. And I think as a leader, one of the things that you need to ask yourself when you are delegating to your team, you need to ask yourself, what is the most important things that have to happen and what can I let go of? Because as we're going to talk about in a little bit, one of the reasons that people have the hardest time delegating is they have a hard time letting go. They've got an idea about how to do it. And oftentimes we all do things a little differently. And so um, I think you got to ask yourself, is it important? Is this really specific um, or is this a more general task that I I need to work you know, on letting them do, take it and run, um, let them shine. Um, another type of delegation that you'll, um, maybe, and this is usually a place to start, honestly, uh, that you'll use oftentimes as a leader is just task delegation. So this is something that you might consider um, in keeping with our example, whereby maybe you're asked to, to provide a report and do a presentation using some data that you were provided, maybe you turn to somebody in your department to do part of this work for you. Maybe you actually write the report and you actually create the presentation, but maybe you turn to someone and say, hey, you know, you're really good with numbers. Would you mind summarizing this data into this sort of format? and then provide it to me. I'm going to take that data. I need to put it into a report. And so you get someone to summarize the data. Maybe you get somebody else to take the report and make some PowerPoint slides, right? And kind of create a presentation. You sometimes delegate, will delegate certain tasks and then have people bring it all back to you where you end up being the one to, to kind of put it back together. So all of these types of delegation are really fairly common in the workplace. Um, you're going to find that they can be useful at different times and in different situations. And so you'll, you'll sort of get a sense of um, which one might work best. You don't want to hit your wagon to one of these and say, I'm always going to provide all the details and tell everybody exactly how I want it. Um, each situation is going to uh, kind of dictate maybe a different type of delegation. So why should you delegate? There are many more reasons than we have time to discuss today about why you should actually delegate, but let's talk about some of the most important ones. So the most, one of the most important ones is kind of what I talked about at the very beginning of the, the presentation, which is time is valuable and you can't do it all, right? Most of us think we can do more than we actually can. I don't know about you, but frequently I find myself doing something and going, oh my gosh, I don't actually have time to do this, but now I've already started and so now I gotta get it done, right? Whether that be in your personal life, sometimes that's at work, um, things seem to take longer to accomplish than we oftentimes think they're going to. I think that's one of the, the things that happens to most people is, oh, I, I can do that quick, right? Um, you probably do this, oh, let me start cooking dinner and then I can do this while I'm cooking dinner. And all of a sudden you can't do both of those things at the same time because all of a sudden this took more, more time than you thought you were gonna need and here you are. Like, oh my gosh, I'm burning the dinner because this is taking longer than I thought. Um, frequently when you're doing tasks, things pop up, right? So time is valuable. You can't do it all. This is one of the biggest, biggest reasons um, that you should delegate to people. I oftentimes hear leaders try to protect the time of their team. So very frequently I hear things, um, I've heard things in the workplace like, you really should take a break. You've been working really hard all day. Like you need to take a break. Or you've been here late a lot lately. You really should get out of here early today or don't stay too late, right? You'll sometimes hear people say, you're still working? Don't stay too late, right? Make sure you go home. Make sure you do something fun. Don't work all weekend. 
I hear leaders, leaders tell me oftentimes they say these things, right? As a leader, one of the things that I find is that it is you who says, don't work too hard, take some time off, make sure you use your vacation, don't work all weekend, and then you turn around and you do all those things that you tell them not to, right? Um, leaders oftentimes work late. They don't take vacations. They don't take breaks. They say things like, oh, I don't have time. I can't, I can't leave early. I can't get, I'm going to be here all night. We've got to get this done. And so leaders oftentimes tell their team members, you know, take some time for yourself, but they model completely different behavior. Um, and what happens is they model behavior that they're trying to dissuade on their team, not realizing that one of the things that they're doing is creating a culture, right? Well, she says, I should leave early today because I worked really hard, but she never leaves early. And so if I leave early, she's probably going to think badly of me. She says that, but she doesn't mean it, right? Even if you mean it, people watch you as a leader. So I would tell you, you can't do it all. No one can do it all. And it's really important as a leader for you to sort of practice what you preach, right? Delegation is one way for you to ease the workload for not only yourself as a leader, but for others and to model good behavior, right? So if you're sticking around doing all the things and you could delegate to other people who might have some capacity, then you're modeling really in many ways, not great behavior. So that's one of the uh, um, big reasons I really highly recommend that leaders work really hard on their, their skills of delegation. Nobody can do it all. And it's really important that you model that, right? So in addition to freeing up time and modeling good behavior, delegating tasks also helps your team to develop. So I truly believe that one of the most important jobs of a leader is to develop other leaders. I think that is pretty high on the list of what makes a good leader. And a good leader develops other leaders. A good leader brings others along. And so people grow into leadership roles. The leaders that you have right now and where you are as a leader, you got there because somebody helped you grow into that role. Very rarely do we pluck somebody and just stick them in a role and say, figure it out, right? Like we help you grow along the way. Well, one of the ways to help people grow and to help your team get better and to develop other leaders is to delegate work to other people so that they, oops, wrong way. So that I hit, inadvertently button, hit the button, sorry. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Um, one, one, one way you can help people grow is to, de to delegate work to others so that they can expand their skill set. This is hard. Okay? I recognize that this is hard, and this is hard for a variety of reasons. A couple of those reasons are, oh my gosh, if I let somebody else do it, then I don't have any control over it, right? Um, or if I let somebody else do it, they're not going to do it the way that I want to. I don't, they're the way that I would do it or the way that I want it done, right? And you have to think about this as you did some things for the first time and maybe you didn't do it exactly how your leader wanted it to be done, but you learned along the way. And eventually you kind of gained their trust and you started to learn more and you started to grow more. I think one of the things you can think about is that not only are you investing into your people, but you're actually investing into yourself. As you grow more leaders under you, it really helps your whole team and helps you along. Um, if any of you have kids, you've actually already practiced this. So for those of you out there who have kids, I want you to think back and maybe your kids aren't here yet. My kids are, so I have fond memories and some nightmare memories of this, but Remember when you taught your kid to buckle their own car seat? Like, I will never forget how great it was to plop the toddler into the car when I had another little kid or a baby. And I would say, okay, buckle yourself in. And they could do the buckle. Like, it was so freeing. It was amazing, right? Or 
Do you remember when they figured out how to take their own bath? Like, whoa, like how amazing is that? I could sit there for like 10 minutes, even if I sat in the bathroom with them and let them take their bath. And eventually they figured it all out on their own. That freed up some time. Um, tying shoes or how you had to tie everybody's shoes and retie everybody's shoes. And once they learn to do that, great. Get your own breakfast, right? So we could talk about a million different, different uh, skills that you might have taught your children. You had a vested interest in helping them develop these skills, not only to help save you time, but you wanted to help them learn, right? As a parent, you spent a lot of time, like I need to help this person become a, a independent adult at some point. They got to leave the house at some point. They're going to have to know how to tie their shoes. I better teach them how. I better quit tying their shoes for them. Was it frustrating? E yes. Teaching kids to tie shoes or, I don't know, get their own cereal. You cleaned up a lot of messes. You bought a lot of extra cereal that ended up on the floor that your dog ate. Uh, but was it worth a process? Most likely the answer is yes. If your kids aren't that old yet and you're sitting in this webinar going, yeah, that will never happen. It will, I promise. Your kid will not go to college not knowing how to tie their shoes. Um, but will it be frustrating in the process? Yes. But are you helping them grow? Yes. Right? And that's our job as leaders is to help others grow. And, and the good byproduct of that is it actually opens up a little bit of time for yourself. When we take the time to delegate, we also learn more about the strengths of those on our team. So we get a sense of what our team members can do. Um, we usually know some of the strengths of our team members because oftentimes we hire them or we come into you know, a position and we, we get to know people. And oftentimes we know kind of what their job is and what their main duties are and we know how they do them. Um, but sometimes what happens is we don't always know that they've got some hidden skills, right? Some other things that they can do that they've maybe never told you about. Um, or maybe they're good at something that they don't even know that they're actually good at. And so when we can delegate, um, we find out that people have additional skills that they never realized. Helpful and useful skills that can really sometimes make a big difference on your team. If you keep all the work yourself, you may not ever discover some of the things that your team is capable of, right? So maybe you really hate working in Excel and maybe one day you're complaining about that and someone says, oh, I love Excel. I actually use it all the time. I even use it at home for things. And you're like, wait, what, right? The next time you get a task that is like, oh, I got to fight with Excel, maybe you delegate that to somebody on your team. Maybe it hasn't typically been something that they've done in the past, but by delegating work, you can start to see what are some of the strengths that people have. Um, it also, when you delegate work to other people and allow them to continue to capitalize on their strengths, it also gives them confidence, right? And as a leader, one of the things um, that you should be doing is helping to build confidence in your team. Most importantly, I think though, delegation creates trust within your team. When you hand over a project or you hand over a task to somebody else and you let them run with it, you're sending a message that you believe in their ability. And creating trust within the team is one of the biggest things that promotes productivity. I hear leaders say a lot, I wish we had more time to do fill in the blank, or I wish I had more time to do fill in the blank, right? And so delegation is one way that you can um, create some of that time. If you have team members who you trust to do the work because they have the time, that frees you up for time that you can accomplish some of the wish, the wish list items that you dream about. And so delegating to your team is super important. It's not just for you. It's not just to create time, but it creates trust, helps people build their skills, develops other people and it's really and delegating is one of the most beneficial things that I think that you can do for your team. So now that I've told you all the reasons you should delegate and now you're on board because it seems like hey there is lots of good reasons to do this and you're thinking 
I'm going to do this. Here's the wrench. It is so much harder than you think. But why is it so much harder than you think? Well, here's some quotes that I've heard from leaders when we talk about delegation. By the time I explain how to do it, I could have just done it myself, right? I'm sure you've heard people say this, right? This is why people tie their kids' shoes to, by the time I teach them how to do it, I could have, I could have done it 10 times, right? If by the time I wait for them to do it, sure, that's probably true in some cases, but you can ask yourself, how many details do I actually need to provide to delegate this? Because I find that people generally want to provide too many details and providing those too many details is what takes the time when you're trying to delegate something, right? And so sometimes you have to provide those details, right? When I talked about those specific types of tasks, if there's a certain way it has to be done, it's going to take a lot longer to delegate it. But I think you need to ask yourself, how many details do I actually need to provide? Am I providing details because I'm trying to get it, get them to do it the way that I would do it or because they need to know it? And so sometimes they say, just let it go. If they don't need the details, let it go, right? Um, another thing that I oftentimes hear, here's another quote for you. They won't do it the way I want it done or they won't do it the way that I would do it. Nope. They definitely won't do it the same way you would do it because they are not you. And so you have to ask yourself, is that okay? You know, there are often many different ways to do the same thing. You see this in your own life. If you've ever asked directions from your phone or from your car, and it gives you like three different ways to get to the same place and you pick one, one of those isn't necessarily better. They're just three ways to do the same thing. How about building a puzzle? That's another good example. When you sit down to build a puzzle, people approach it differently. Some people do the outside, try to get the whole outside done, the straight pieces, and then they fill in the middle. Some people sort the pieces. Some people start looking for things that go together and put together little chunks of the puzzle first and then put it all together. Um, it all ends up the same in the end, right? The product ends up the same. So if you don't need to have something done a particular way, let it go right? And that's hard to do. Regardless of what kind of delegation you're doing, the most important thing you can do is communicate. This may vary over time, but it is always vital in every project. And I really can't stress this enough that the number one key success to delegation is communication. So now you've learned you're going to how to communicate, how to get going, all the reasons to do it, and delegation is gonna solve all your problems, but how do you get started? Well, there's many ways to get going. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a few sort of steps. We've talked about some of these along the way, but I've kind of put them in an order, right? So the first thing you can do to get started, if you're not sure how to do it, is just to identify smaller bits or pieces of a larger project or a, a bigger task um, that you can give to somebody or give to a couple of people, right? So break up a big, big task into something smaller. And it doesn't even have to be a big task. You can take a somewhat small task and still break it up into smaller pieces and give people little chunks at a time. It'll help you ease into delegating and it'll help them ease into being delegated too. And you can kind of figure out how your team's gonna work with this. It's gonna be really important for you to find the right person for the job. Skill sets matter, right? So identify what the skill set is of the people on your team and give somebody something that matches up with their skill set. Again, it's going to build confidence. It's going to free up some time for you. Um, oops, sorry, sticky fingers. Um, but the other thing you may find is that people may volunteer, right? hey, I really want to try this. And you look at them and go, oh, I just don't know if they have the skill set. So one strategy you can use is you can pair people up. Maybe you know someone who has that skill set and someone who really doesn't, but they really are interested in doing the work. Pair them up together so that they can learn from each other and you can build somebody's skill set, right? So 
I oftentimes hear leaders say, well, part of the problem is I get people volunteering to do things, but they really don't have the skill set. So here's one way to sort of avoid that. Um, lay out expectations. This goes back to the communication thing, right? Provide any details about intricacies that are necessary. If there's a few parameters for the project, make sure your team knows it. There's nothing worse when you are delegated a project and you're not provided any details. Your team may try to guess what you want. So if there's something you need or want, you need to provide that. If there isn't, it's equally as important to say, look, I don't care how you do this. I don't care what the end product needs looks like. I just need to make sure this piece is in there. You do it however you want. That saves everybody a lot of time. And when you're really first delegating for the first time, one of the things that I would say is um, do some check-ins along the way. It's really important in the beginning stages of delegation for both you and the person who's being delegated to, to actually do some check-ins. How's it going? What's going on? You wanna show me something like, hey, why don't you do this piece? And then when you get that done, come, sh come show me uh, let me see what it's like. Oftentimes, um, leaders, you know, I could tell you, I can think of a million times when I had an idea of something I wanted, but I couldn't really, um, I didn't, couldn't articulate it well. And so I would send off someone on my team and say, okay, here's what I'm thinking, but I don't know exactly what I want it to look like. So can you do this and then bring it back to me? And then we can talk about how to move forward from there. Check-ins are really, really important and one of the things that you should do when you're delegating. So it seems real easy, right? Like you identify the tasks, you identify the people, you check in with the people, it should all go really well. And most of the time it is going to. However, sometimes it doesn't go well. And that's okay, right? Because not everything goes perfect every time. So when it doesn't go well, um, there are some things you can do, but similar to what we talked about before, one of the things that I would tell you is be really proactive to try to avoid some of the pitfalls by following some of the tasks that we talked about, right? So you can avoid some of the something went wrong simply by making sure you're proactive. But once something goes wrong, right? Like let's say you delegate something, it doesn't go as you thought it would. Take some time to ask yourself, did you identify challenges up front? Did you actually think through any challenges up front? Did you build time for check-ins? Were you upfront about what you wanted? Um, I think it's really important to provide constructive feedback to your team. If you delegate something, they bring it back and it's not what you want and you have to fix it, you should tell your team, hey, you guys did a good job at this, this, and this. I did have to fix a few things, this, this, and this. Here's how I did that. I just want you to see so that next time when you guys do this, we can kind of move toward making sure that we get it, get it done this way, right? So providing that open feedback. Nobody wants to be told they did a good job when they didn't. So I want you to remember that, right? So if you delegate something, it comes back, it's not quite what you thought it was going to be, you need to let them know. I think you should also make sure to address things when they're not working. Be upfront. Um, don't wait till the end. Don't go, oh, well, this isn't working. I can tell this is going to be a disaster. I know I'm going to have to fix it, but I'll just let them keep working on it. Stop them where they are. Okay? Maybe it's, hey, I don't think this delegation is working. I realized I need to have more control. I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to sorry, that's my fault. I probably shouldn't have delegated this or I should have provided you better details or whatever. Be upfront, that open communication, but don't be afraid to step in. Um, don't wait until the end. That's my big piece of advice. And I would say at the end, do a debrief with all your team members. Discuss strategies for next time. Ask what went well from their viewpoint. Ask them what you think you could do better next time. Ask them what they think they could do better next time. Uh, that post-mortem is really important when you're do delegating a project. And again, um, communication is the key. I love this quote by George Bernard Shaw. The single biggest problem is communi in communication is the illusion that it has taken place, right? 
Um, I don't think you can over communicate when you're delegating. All right, so again, I think um, I told you this this time is gonna go was gonna go faster and I could have told you a million other other things. So there's a lot more that we left out, but there's a lot of good resources out there too. So if you are interested in learning more about delegation, um, there's a couple of books that I've put up here and legit, if you Google delegation books, there's a million of them out there. These are two really popular ones that um, people really seem to, to um, that resonate with people a lot. If you are somebody who actually, um, instead of reading, likes to listen, there's some good podcasts out there on delegation as well. So I've um, put a couple of those, listed a couple of those here as well. And we have just a little bit of time for questions. Sorry, Megan, I meant to leave a little more time, but you know how that goes. No, you are perfectly fine. Now is a great time for questions. So if anybody has them, please put them in the chat. And while you're doing that, I'm going to launch a quick poll here for everybody who's still on with us. This is just to see how you liked the webinar, if there's any other topics we can provide for you on these sessions, because these are free. It's your personal professional development time. So let us know what you want to see in these webinars, and, and we'd love to provide that for you. So seeing no questions yet, don't be shy. Go ahead and put them in the chat. And if you think of one later, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us on our social media pages. We are on Facebook and LinkedIn as Kirkwood Corporate Training. And you can also reach us at corporate training at kirkwood.edu. And we can get all those questions to Brooke and then get back to you as well. All right. All right. Well, I am still seeing no questions and no raised hands. So I will take that as a very good sign <laughs> that everybody got all their questions answered during your presentation, Brooke. So thank you so much for joining us today. Like I said before, this was definitely a highly requested topic. So I'm really glad that you were able to join us today to, to answer everybody's request to learn more about delegation. So. Again, everybody, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Uh, if we can provide another training topic that you're interested in, we'd love to do that for you. And, and thank you so much for joining us. Have a good day.